Um, so Leap is a digital point of sale application that helps contractors to digitize basically the entire in-home sales process. So everything that you do uh, from generating estimates and contracts uh, to going through your company's story, displaying brochures electronically, generating proposals, um, integrating financing with secure payment capture. It's everything that you do from the time that you uh, pull up in the driveway or you click start on that Zoom call to the time that you leave the appointment. It's digitizing the entire process for, um, for your sales process. So with that being said, I'd like to welcome uh, Emily Washkovic. Emily is a senior field marketing manager and small business expert with Yelp. She's based out of their Chicago office. Um, and she Al, and Emily, you can definitely uh, d do a better job of introducing yourself than I can. Uh, so I want to go ahead and turn over the controls to you, and we'll have you go ahead through our presentation today. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, and really excited to chat with all of you guys today. Let me just get this screen shut set up, and then I'll keep talking. All right, so I first want to just pause and acknowledge the fact that these past few months have been extremely challenging for everyone in a variety of ways, personally, professionally, and in your guys' industry, there has been a lot of changes, but also a lot of requirement for you to still be out and about working in many instances. So just remember that this is a challenging time for you, your team, your family, and if there's anything you can do to take a little bit of pause and just deep breath now and again, that really can help just take these really busy days one step slower every now and again. So who am I? I am Emily Washkovic. I've been with Yelp since 2014, and my main role at the company is to educate business owners on the free tools available to make themselves successful on our site. So I speak at conferences, trade shows, conventions, and I oftentimes host events as well. I lived in San Francisco my first few years with the company, which was how I was fortunate enough to meet Carlos. And Carlos has been so incredible to join us here today. He is the owner of Mr. Roofing, which is a roof and solar installation company in the Bay Area. Carlos, let me hand it over to you real quickly so you can give a brief introduction of yourself as well as Mr. Roofing. Thank you, uh, Emily. And my, uh, my name is Carlos Rodriguez with Mr. Roofing and as as you said, we're a roof and solar installer here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, I've been in charge now 22 years of our family business. We've been around 31 years. Uh, and I always tease, uh, no one's in roofing because they want to be. And uh, that was the case for me. Um, you know, uh, my, my father used to make me go out and, and during the summertime and with the tear-off crews uh, to teach me the value of hard work, keep me out of trouble. and and he would say, you know, if you don't uh, go to school, you're going to end up doing this the rest of your life. So I thought, you know, that roofing was, uh, wasn't cool necessarily. So I went away to college, graduated, was working in a corporate environment, but my dad needed a lot of help. So, uh, you know, it's been the best thing that's happened to me. And now I want it so that little kids grow up and say, when I grow up, I want to be a roofer. So uh, that's what we're doing over here. I'm so glad you can be here today. You just have such great perspective and I'll be queuing it over to you to share a lot of things about your business today. And one thing I also wanna mention is if you guys have questions for us that you don't feel comfortable asking on the call or having us answer publicly, feel free to get in touch with us via email and we can always set up a call or answer those questions one-to-one. -one. So before we dive in, let's talk about Yelp. I think a lot of folks in the home service industry ask themselves, is Yelp really for my business? I thought Yelp was for finding restaurants. And I always tell people, you know, we eat three times a day. Hopefully we need to get our roof repaired or plumbing fixed, you know, every few years instead. So while one individual might not be searching as much for home services on our platform as they are for restaurants, those searches are still definitely happening and they trust our site. They really trust the content they find there. One other thing I wanted to show you quickly here about Yelp is it's gonna help with your natural SEO. So I did this search last week before I started my vacation, roofer in San Francisco on Google. We're gonna have our ads there at the top. You're gonna normally see two to four ads on Google. 
And then the first and second link here in that search are gonna be for Yelp. So I'm only illustrating that to show you that by taking advantage of your free listing, you're already helping get in front of eyeballs by being on a very highly indexed website. So I'm gonna hand it over to Carlos quickly. Carlos, can you share with these guys when you first got involved with your Yelp listing and just your mentality when it comes to online listings and your business being reflected online on these different sites? Yes. So um, in 2007, I received an email um, that our business had gotten a five-star review. Uh, and it was from this site called Yelp. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. I read the review. I was pretty happy that we got a five-star review. And I thought, what is this thing? Like, you know, and, and on there, it, 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 there was a link to select um, claiming your free listing. And so that's what I've done. I've, I've, I've um, claimed my free listing on a lot of these different platforms, primarily to be able to um, be aware of what people are saying about us. And, uh, you know, the initial reaction was like, oh, cool, we got a five star review, right? Um, that's pretty cool. And then I thought, uh oh, huh, if this is in the wrong hands, like someone can try to sabotage us and oh my God, this could be bad and all this kind of thing. Um, but I claimed my free uh, listing and there were a couple of free tools. So I set up our profile, again, mostly to be aware of what people out there in the on the internet were, were saying about us um and that's, I think that's really important i'm gonna quickly sorry guys i'm gonna move this over here so i can see carlos okay let me jump back into it yeah and i think what you mentioned there carlos about really just making sure you're claiming any of these listings that exist on the internet one other thing i want to mention to hit on carlos's point about knowing and being aware of what's said about you online is you can set up google alerts for the name of your business and that's totally free to do when you set that up you can even choose how often you get an email and those emails will just tell you if you're being mentioned somewhere sometimes it might be you know in a local publication or other times it might be in a review so getting that information and having visibility about that is really important and you know in this time especially when we're talking about covid communication and expectations are key so really even just being aware of what's happening online as well as in person when you or your other employees are interacting with people is so valuable and important now i've been saying during covid that the most important thing is your covid message creating a clear concise and consistent message. For you guys, it's very direct. Hours of operation, have they changed at all? Are you still functioning normally? Offerings, maybe some of the services that you're offering now are specific to COVID. Are you helping other businesses get COVID ready or install safety features, things of that nature? Or maybe you aren't offering all the same services you're known for. What are special safety measures that have been put in place, if any? Best ways to get the project in motion. So give them that call to action right away. And also, do you have any virtual offerings? I think there's an entire subset of consumers right now that are only going to be open to virtual at the time. And if you're offering those, you want to be elevated as an option to those people. And if you're not, you want to be automatically let out of that list so you're not getting unnecessary lead calls that aren't really appropriate jobs for you. I'm gonna to touch on two brief things on your Yelp page that you can update to share your COVID message. And then we'll talk to Carlos quickly about how he directs consumers to the call to action that he wants them to take. So on your Yelp page, every single business right now is gonna have a COVID-19 banner. It's a direct way of letting us remind consumers that hours might be different, offerings might be different, but every single business can modify their COVID banner for free and have a direct message in a very prominent place when consumers find your business listing. So I recommend that everyone update their COVID banner at a bare minimum and let people know when they're open and what they're offering. We also have COVID-19 related business highlights. So business highlights are a very 
frequently used feature for home service providers, but especially right now, if you're doing virtual estimates or remote services, you can indicate that on your Yelp page and that is searchable to the consumer. So just another way of getting your business at the top and included in those lists when consumers are looking. We also have these call to actions. So online scheduling, flexible options, free consultations. These are all things that you can indicate you offer on your Yelp page where consumers might be finding you. Here's how it will actually display on the page. And then let's look here at Mr. Roofing's website. Something I noticed right when I got here is I have options as a consumer. I can click on my request an appointment button. I have a phone number in the top. Carlos, can you talk a little bit about the ideal steps or life cycle of a consumer and how you're working to get them from finding you to actually scheduling that appointment, estimate, whatever it may be, that's the next step? Yeah, so, you, you know, uh, again, part of claiming my uh, business profile on, on different platforms across the internet is basically basically to say, hey, we're over here. We want to do your roof. We want to do your solar. We're we're pretty awesome. Um, and you know, different sites um, ultimately, hopefully, are gonna funnel people towards our website. And and then from here, ideally, they'll request an appointment. Uh, we have an option to do a virtual appointment where through their phone. You know, they can show us stuff and um, we can see and do a, like an initial assessment um, as part of like a virtual or contactless um, approach. Ideally, we want to get, you know, it's hard to get a haircut over the phone or, or truly um, assess a, a roof situation or, or solar even because of electrical or different things. So ideally, we can get an, um, an initial indication if we can help. And then ideally we can go out and meet with them, uh, of course, taking into consideration safety. Um, we have a whole way of going about it, contact lists, flying drones, um, you know, masks, gloves, hand sanitizer, all that sort of stuff. But ultimately we want them to know we're, we're, we're here, we wanna do the work for them. Um, we feel not too many companies are gonna take care of them as well as we are. And then once we're in their business, we know they're going to be raving fans of us and uh, they'll give us a referral, a review, and then that just is, is a rinse and repeat cycle that, that we want to continue to encourage. I love that. And another thing I wanted to point out quickly here before we move on is right below that image I was just showing you on Carlos's website, they have some key information pieces that are going to be valuable to a consumer. $500 referral bonus, no payment, zero interest for one year, easy financing. So they're addressing key pain points of their common consumer right on the front of their website. And really, again, trying to give that person one more reason to get on the phone or fill out their online form to request the next step in the process. So when you're thinking about your services that you provide and the most common way that you get a new customer, ask yourself what sort of questions they might commonly ask on the phone or what sort of things maybe hold up that process from initial inquiry to scheduling the job and how can you address those concerns or questions in a way that gets that transaction and that conversation happening faster. All right. Moving forward here, once you're getting that message clear and concise, like Carlos was saying, you wanna spread that message across all platforms. So your website, your Yelp listings, social media platforms, and then also are there any community websites or boards that you can put yourselves on? Are there different blogs or neighborhood areas where you can be trusted advisor or someone that they think of when they have these different issues or service needs that your business can provide? I think an important thing that Carlos mentioned is thinking of all these different options as potential funnels that bring you leads into your business. And another point I want to make here is 
you do not necessarily as the owner need to be the one in charge of these things. Carlos and I will dig a little deeper on that in a moment. But if you have a nephew, if you have a son, if you have a younger employee or someone who's maybe learning, apprenticing under you, ask them if they can do some of these online things for you. This is something very second nature to them, very easy for them. And it might be worth your time and money to spend a little bit of extra hours on them and allow them to do some of this online work for you. All right, so now it's time to talk about our favorite part, reviews. And I promise it's not gonna be painful, especially because we have Carlos here and he's gonna give us firsthand experience about how to survive after years yeah. of ups and downs. So the first thing I always like to say before we talk about reviews is to actually set the record straight. A lot of business owners in any industry think about Yelp and other online review sites as a place for people to complain. And that certainly is true, right? We all know a few negative Nancys. They're going to always exist no matter what site we're talking about. But on Yelp, almost 80% of our reviews are positive. And we have more five-star reviews than one, two, and three-star reviews combined. So overall, the sentiment on the site and the culture of its users is to really talk about those great experiences, to elevate those businesses that have left a real positive impression. And while those negative things do happen, I think Carlos's mindset will let you guys all expand your thought and perspective to understand how sometimes those negative reviews can even be helpful. Carlos, let me kick it to you quickly. Can you just share a little bit about your perspective and opinion when it comes to online reputation reviews and how you approach that whole process mentally? Yeah, well, you know, um going back to 2007 when uh, I got we got that first review and uh I was pretty excited about it then I started worrying about oh my god like if this is in the wrong hands it could be bad we get sabotaged right so I started asking my friends hey how do you you know how do you feel about like uh, um when you see a bad review um cuz I wanted to get other people's perspectives not just like me as the business owner and you know a lot of them said like we read the reviews and then we see you know kind of the totality of of the reviews so we'll see there'll be a pattern that's basically where i surmise from it right there'll be some sort of pattern and when we see a bad review sometimes you can tell when that person is just you know um uh, kind of a jerk or or um maybe not very reasonable right and so that kind of set me at ease a little bit and and you know so over time as we would get reviews especially from different platforms like angie's list locally here in san francisco there's something called diamond certified um there's uh a lot of them right guild quality things like that but what i i see it as a valuable management tool and it's not as scary as it is a, as it is at night and so me fretting about what you know, someone's going to say, I, I really believe that if we go about um, honoring our mission statement, our values and our vision as a company, and if we're and when the rubber meets the road and we're performing our work, um, people are going to say what, what their experience was. And what I love about this is uh, review platforms is that I get an insight on what's happening. And I can use it to train on something that we need to get better at or celebrate the stuff that we're doing really well and, and share that with the company. Um, so I'm not just catching people doing something bad. I'm actually finding ways to encourage them and reward them for the good stuff that we're doing. Um, and it's worked well. And, uh, you know, so it, it's not as scary as it was for me in 2007. Um, and it's it's been helpful for our team as well. Then it's not just me saying, hey, you know, uh, we're we did this wrong or we did that wrong. It's like, hey, look, this is what someone is saying about us. Is it true? Give me a little context. What what you know, or is this a real customer? Sometimes we found that's not a real customer. Uh yeah. and and what I like about Yelp is that we can actually respond. Like there are some sites that you can't respond to. And so the reason I like to respond is for future users or future people or people doing research on us, right? Because um, mm -hmm. there's three sides to every story. 
you know, mine, theirs, and the truth, right? So, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. And we'll get into that a little bit actually right here. So Carlos is really, really great at responding to reviews. He just takes the high road, I think is the best way to describe it. But honestly, there are times where it, <laughs> when I read the review, I think, oh, he could have taken an opportunity to really go off here, but then he always takes the opportunity to take the high road. So let's go all the way back to 2014. We have Crystal and she's talking about not only how she used an online form, but she contacted multiple roofers. And at the end of the day, her one-star review is because it's gonna take so long for Carlos's team to be able to slot her in on the calendar. So Carlos, you gave a really nice response here but I just want you to maybe share any of your perspective. Like you do this a lot. You kind of educate on a red flag that they might be seeing in the industry, but how did you kind of come to being able to respond to these reviews in such a calm way and, and really select these words? Um, and how were you able to just move forward after you respond and, and leave it at that? Well, it, it took a little bit of uh, reinforcement schedules for myself. So what I mean by that is when I would get a, a review or an email for a review and then I, you know, click it, there, it, it felt like when I was in college getting, you know, and waiting for my um, final grade or a grade on a, on a final project or something. And I would get really intense, even though I was prepared and had good intentions and, and ultimately got good grades. Uh, I was still kind of really nervous by it. So when I get a review, I take 10 deep breaths, right? To let um, a little dopamine clear out the cortisol in my brain so I can think straight. And then I read the review. Um, I, I, and then I, I kind of think about it. I ask some questions um, uh, and then I'll sit with it, right? Cause cooler heads prevail. And, and then what I'll do is I'll start uh, asking people um, if they're, um, is any, you know, uh, give some context. Um, and then after that, I will, I put myself in their shoes and, and, I, and I, I try to respond and be helpful if possible. So in this case, I, I guess Crystal um, was upset that we couldn't, I guess, get out to do even an appointment at her, uh, based on her time frame. Um, but we're proud of that. That means it's like when you go to a restaurant and there's a line outside, it's probably because it's a good restaurant. Similar to us, we're pretty proud of that. And, and um, people are willing to wait for us to do a wonderful job for them. And, and so then I just kind of recommended a few things that they, she should look out for so she doesn't have a bad experience in dealing with the average uh, company out there. Um, and then also, you know, a friend of, of mine, uh, Wade Lombard, he wrote a good piece. Um, uh, he's, his company's called Square Cow Movers. I mm -hmm. think they're in Texas. I would recommend yeah. if you're on this uh, webinar to search, search that. He has a good article where uh, he, he talks about what he does is he stop, drops, and rolls, kind of like a fire, like you put out a fire if you're on fire. So I think <laughs> it's a good analogy. And it's uh, so find a way to, to um, you know, help yourself because ultimately, again, this is valuable management feedback. The fact that someone took the time to write this, they, they are actually telling other people this in person. And now they're broadcasting it online. And um, so we as business owners can put our heads in the sand and act like this isn't going on, but it is. So it's, it's actually great that you're getting some insight on it. And if there is a pattern here, there's an opportunity to get better, um, right? Because as, as, as good as we are, we're still human beings and, and we might have an off day once in a while, right? Um, but we yeah. get it about how we make that up. Absolutely. I think I put a couple other ones. Oh yeah, this is a great example. So yeah. on Yelp, users can actually update their review and go from, you know, an original one star to whatever. But in this case, Ed, he, you know, must not be as avid of a user. He basically just took his same review and edited it. But the point I wanted to make here is 
the review itself doesn't even so much matter at this point as it does that Carlos created such a fan that they logged back in to update it. So I can only tell from Carlos's response that it was originally a one star, but they had a scheduling misconflict here. And um, it was a you know common mistake, essentially all that needed to happen for Ed to be blown away and really excited about what incredible service he received after feeling like it was poor was that touch point and was that communication. Um, Carlos, can you speak at all to how your staff maybe works a process like that through? Like, let's say you got this negative review and it was about um, scheduling. Do you have a chain of command or how do you communicate that and make sure someone can get in touch with the customer to, to see what next steps might be? Yeah, so, um, you know, back to three sides to every story, um, the perception is reality. And in this case, um, I, I think Ed's, there was a miscommunication or a misunderstanding, which led to an unrealized expectation. And um, so we do have um, project managers. Um, we have a, a project management system, right, where we, we schedule everything. And we have a way of communicating with, with folks to do a pre-construction meeting to avoid this sort of this sort of situation, even though we go through those through that checklist and those uh, processes, apparently there could be an opportunity for a misunderstanding, which scares me. Like if someone's not following a process, how much how many more misunderstandings there can be? But at least this person let us know about it. So um, and then at that point we can go through our process and figure it out. And it turns out that it, um, we were actually calling this person at a phone number that um, he did not respond to. And so therefore it led to this misunderstanding. We figured because he didn't respond and we didn't go out to do the work, right? Right. And then from there, we um, were able to communicate, explain everything, go through our dispute resolution process, and then, you know, honor our commitment. And then, you know, um, he on his own accord went back and updated the, the review, which I think was very great, fair and reasonable. And we were grateful for that. Yeah. And I think it's important to what you said, Carlos, sometimes when you get a review that's negative, you can look at it as, well, they didn't understand or they didn't etc when in reality acknowledging that a missed expectation is normally the reason for a negative feeling or a negative review then all you need to do is go back to adjusting or communicating those expectations so instead of looking at it as at if the reviewer is right or wrong you want to more so look at it as how can we move forward in a way that this customer is happy or feels resolve has come and i think all small business owners ultimately want that. Sometimes the bump of the internet, if I can call it that, is the holdup between providing that same service you would provide in person. If I remember, I think I put one more in here. Oh yeah, okay, so this was an interesting one. You let them know about resources on your website, which I think is really helpful. Um, and actually, I think this is probably what I was mentioning in the first one. So skip over this. But essentially, the key takeaway or theme here is even when Carlos is responding to something that has nothing to do with their service or offering like this one was, he can still take an opportunity to display his customer service practices and to show who they are as a business. So he had said this earlier, I'll repeat it one more time before we move on. Responding to reviews isn't necessarily so much about that particular reviewer as it is for reflecting and displaying who you are as a business and what sort of customer service practices you have. So in general, consumers, half of the time, 51% actually, expect a response from a business when they write an online review. So I always say, you know, you're essentially letting down half of the audience just by not engaging or acknowledging that those conversations are happening. 
So this is a, a sentence by Jay Bay, kind of in this space of responding to consumers. And he always says, you have to actively listen, join the conversation in order to gain consumer trust and stand out. And that's what we've been talking about here, actively listening. So getting all of those sites and figuring out in general, in the greater scope of online, where is your business being talked about? joining the conversation so like carla said you can't respond on every site but on the ones you can it's really important to respond and join that conversation and do it in a way that reflects who you are you're really again trying to gain consumer trust and give an overall picture of your business here's the book i was mentioning for all of you readers Jay Bear, he talks about hugging your haters, and he really is big about every complaint, every channel, every time. So back to the original point here of Carlos, getting ownership and actually claiming all of those free business pages is really important. And then listening, so actually hearing what's being talked about on those sites, both good and bad, and remembering again that we are going to be skewing towards good reviews oftentimes. Okay, let's break it down specifically to tactical steps. If you're getting a positive review, in my mind, there's something to add and nothing to add in that instance. Something to add is gonna be if you can reemphasize or reiterate a service that they mentioned or something that they raved about that is really core to who you are as a business. By reiterating that or mentioning that in your public comment response, you're giving yourself more SEO value around those keywords, okay? So all those words you're using to respond to a review help you show up in searches. In the nothing to add category is more so in the frame of if you don't have time to personalize a response to your customers, rather than copy and pasting the same thank you message and putting that on the front end of your Yelp page, use a direct message to do that so you don't look canned on your listing. Carlos actually responds to his positive reviews and personally responds to them. Carlos, do you want to say a few minutes on that? I mean. Does that take you very long? Has that proven to be valuable for you? Yeah, again, it's um, so for uh, I'll reiterate, like, thank you for uh, you. I'll, I'll, I'll put key words in there, right? Like roofing and San Francisco or roofing San Mateo, something where the response um, shows like um, something that I want to reiterate or people to look for, and it helps with like search engine stuff, and whether it's Yelp search engine or, or whoever else is, it'll, it'll kind of show up as we put that as content. Um, and yeah, it's, it's again, and, and partly because the people that are using these platforms are in the sandbox that we like to play in as well. They're the type of customer that appreciates how we, we go about uh, doing what we do. So that's why uh, I, I, again, I'm writing to the future user, right? Yeah, um, that's that they perfect. Can, yeah. And essentially word of mouth is free marketing, right? You guys have been operating off of word of mouth as service providers forever from before the internet. And Carlos always says, it's better to hear what your customers have to say about you than for you to tell people what you're great at. So just keep that in mind when you're getting these reviews. That is a great way to market your business and sharing those reviews on social media, for example, or having that on your website for feedback. Those are all great ways to not only share and spread that positivity, but also let future customers know that you pay attention to your reviews and you really value getting that feedback on a review platform. All right, briefly, I wanna talk about critical reviews. I personally see them in three camps. Legitimate, something happened, right? Like Carlos was saying, there's a missed expectation oftentimes. Inaccurate, Either one of those in my mind is a good opportunity for a public comment where you can either address maybe some changes or things that you're gonna do internally based on the feedback or addresses the information directly. So maybe there's a missed piece of information that you wanna clarify. In Carlos's case, maybe they provide 
some sort of free estimate or um, you know, some sort of solar offering, and it's just misdescribed by the consumer, a public comment would be a great way to clarify any of that information. But if it's a rant or a rave, if it's one of those people where Carlos and I have talked about them maybe being a negative Nancy or um, not that reliable or trustworthy, take the time to maybe think about just sending them a direct message or just ignoring it altogether. On Yelp, you can click on the name of the reviewer and see a breakdown of all the types of reviews they've written on our site. So if they're skewing to the one and two stars, sometimes I say, it's fine to just let that pass. If you're doing enough volume and getting reviews, you're going to have a handful of negative ones. It's just kind of the nature of doing business. And with that, I'll just toss it back to Carlos to say a few words on not interfering with the natural flow of reviews. So really not going about and asking for those reviews, but almost letting them happen naturally. Carlos, share your perspective on that and how you and your team go about communicating in reviews with your customers yeah i i feel it's um this is my personal philosophy and i don't expect everyone to have the same philosophy uh i feel it's i i want it, the content that out that's out there to be um genuine right uh so for example the first review you 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 showed with the one star was where we really dropped the ball right we really dropped the ball in that case i'm i was glad that she wrote about it i was able to analyze our process and take the opportunity to retrain because uh, we were getting a little too comfortable um and then and so what i'm looking for here is a pattern uh, if there's a pattern going on then that's an indication that um we're doing something well or we have to get better and and typically what what i've done um we we do have um like at uh, at our closeout process we send thank you letters etc cetera, etc cetera, and we do have a link for people to write a review if they want to um i have it on my email signature people love us on yelp and things like that so then they can click and read about us or they can click and write a review about us i'm, I'm rarely asking them the few times that i do ask and i've trained my team to do this when when we'll get clients that often are raving about us, like, oh, you guys were fantastic. The place is cleaner than when you got here and you tore off like a hundred years worth of roof on there. You, you know, we love our solar and uh, we have zero bill and, and we're saving a ton of money. It's gonna help pay for college. I mean, people say this thing, these things and I'm, I'm like, wow, thank you kindly, et cetera. And then I'll usually have our project managers or I'll ask and say, hey, what's your favorite um review platform would you mind sharing that because we would love people to know about us and hear about us so that it's not us saying it it's it's our clients that are saying it and then you know so the, um they'll go out and then they'll write a review whether it's on our website yelp angie's list guild quality um diamond certified whatever it is and then what then in our sales process we'll ask prospective clients to look and see what people are saying about us and triangulate it like if one skewed more than the other like because you know as uh human beings we might try to game the system and just get only five star reviews but I, you know reasonable people think that's fishy uh it's not really you know so you want to bury the bad star the bad star reviews um but if it's all like too perfect people know that it's a little fishy like something doesn't smell good here and you know they're kind of gaming the system so we you know uh that's our approach that's why i i have come competitors that have 200 reviews um but they're paying for the review and you know they might get the um search engine results perhaps but uh we are too and, and we're we're getting our fair share of work I think that's a great way to think about it. I'm going to toss this slide up here now as we kind of wind what Carlos and I have prepared. Again, I want to reiterate that if you guys have questions, please feel free to reach out to me via email. I've been speaking on behalf of this company for almost seven years now. So people email me from all across the country about all kinds of things. So you won't be an outlier in my inbox. Don't worry about it at all. 
if I'm not the right person to help you or answer your question, I can certainly connect you to someone who is. And then I always like to point people to our blog. We have an entire section just for business owners. And sometimes we'll be writing articles about Yelp tools, both free and paid. But sometimes we'll be talking about other resources, tools, guidance, and advice for all different industries. So there's quite a bit in there for home and professional service providers. If you're ever looking for help or content, that's a great place to go. And we definitely have some time available. So if you guys have questions, I'll turn it over now and we'll be happy to answer some for a while. Fantastic. Thank you, Emily. And thank you, Carlos. I think that covered a lot of um, great points, a lot of great insights and uh, real life examples of how companies like Carlos and Mr. Roofing are using Yelp. So thank you both for, for being here and providing your insights and information today. We really appreciate it. Um, so we do have a couple of questions that have come in. So I'll go ahead and kick those over your way. Uh, the first one is coming in from Casey. I know a couple of slides back you had shown um, kind of a pie graph about the uh, the number of positive reviews versus uh, the one, two, and three star. Yeah, that one exactly. So the 80% of reviews that are showing as like kind of that neutral to positive range on there, does that include filtered reviews or just um, of course. or not? <laughs> That's a really good question. So nearly 75% of the reviews on the site are recommended. And this breakdown is of the recommended reviews. There are about 24% of the reviews on the site that are not recommended. That breakdown is not displayed in this pie graph. Perfect. And that actually leads into um, another question we've got from Chris here. Can you talk a little bit more about those not recommended reviews and like how you'd recommend handling those or go, have, provide a little bit more detail about that section? Yeah, absolutely. So for those of you who aren't aware, Yelp has a review recommendation software. It's an algorithm that's computer generated, but written by real humans who work at our company. And that algorithm and code is working to recommend the most reliable and trustworthy reviews. So it's looking at a variety of factors, how long the user's been on Yelp, how many reviews they've written, if they have friends, the actual content of the review itself. So a ton of things. One thing that the algorithm is also doing is working to not recommend solicited reviews or reviews that have been asked for. So a good example I like to always tell people is I had a car wash in LA. The guy was doing volumes of up to 200 cars a day and he had an iPad in the area where people were walking through to pay where they could enter in a review before they went and got their car. To him, he wasn't doing anything wrong. He really wasn't trying to, to do anything harmful, but the site and the algorithm was identifying all those reviews as coming from the same IP address. So to them, what was the difference between Bob sitting in his office and creating accounts and writing reviews for himself all day or real customers walking through the business? So you don't wanna do things like that. You also don't wanna do things like send a mass newsletter asking for everyone to write your review once or twice a year. On Yelp specifically, you want to allow those reviews to come organically. So like Carlos said, a link to Yelp on your website or in your email signature is great. And again, on other sites, this isn't the case. So I do like to mention on Angie's List, for example, or Google My Business, they might even provide resources and tools for you to ask for reviews. Feel free to do that on those sites, but on Yelp, you're really just working against yourself and putting time and energy in an area that's gonna create and yield frustration because those reviews will often be not recommended. So one other thing I like to say, and Carlos, I'll let you say anything if you have a few thoughts, but yeah. in the home service industry as well, Oftentimes you guys are creating such an impactful experience that someone might write their very first Yelp review because of how incredible your business was. And it can be really frustrating when that review is not recommended, but that software is constantly working and also constantly changing and being adapted. So reviews can move between sections over time. And I certainly see that happen frequently. Carlos, anything you'd like to add about the software? You've been dealing and working with it for years now. Yeah, so 
one thing that we do, you might want to close your ears, Emily. Uh, just kidding. I, I, you know, uh, uh, my lifestyle doesn't change whether you use Yelp or not as, um, as a home services business. I think it can be very helpful for you because of the free tools and the stuff that Yelp provides. So we actually will also tell people, hey, look at the filtered reviews or the non-recommended reviews because they're still listed there. So you can still point people towards those and then they can still look and read them. Um, Absolutely. And then for us, what we do is, um, you know, for us, uh, in our, so know your marketplace, know your ideal customer, know what sandbox they play in, and then go after that sandbox. For us, Yelp is very relevant because the type of, of, of user on Yelp's platform is someone who's going to really love what we do. So um, it's relevant for us. So find out if it's relevant in, in your area. Um, I know the fear is that Yelp is sabotaging, uh, as a business owner, that Yelp is sabotaging these reviews because they want you to do I heard I heard a lot of interesting stories. And I'm like, you know, it's it's free marketing. Like, so also like look in the mirror and is there a pattern in those reviews from that sandbox? And if there is, do you need to fix that pattern or or do you need to celebrate that pattern? But we gotta be honest with ourselves as business owners. <laughs> Absolutely. Perfect. So thank you for that. Um, next question coming in is if you get a like a, a low or a poor review that you don't want on your page, do you recommend, can you delete a review? Do you recommend re deleting reviews? How do you recommend handling things like that? It's a really good question. So Yelp has terms of service and content guidelines, just like any other site. There are things that users can't do. One of them actually is writing reviews that aren't a firsthand consumer experience. Another example would be writing a review as an ex-employee. Um, so if things like that are happening, if you have reviews that are, you know, full of racial slurs or swear words or, you know, anything of that nature, on Yelp, we do have a flag button. You can flag reviews from your business owner's account or from your personal Yelp account, and it will go to a real team of ours. They're based out of San Francisco. They evaluate those flags in about one to three days normally. And we also have a secondary flagging process. So if you're flagging something and not getting the response you want, you can make a second request. It'll go to a completely different team member for that evaluation. One thing I will say though is, on our site and many others, and Carlos, I'll let you jump in, you cannot delete reviews, in which case that's why responding is so valuable and important because it almost puts into question that review in a way. So I'll stop there. Carlos, are there any sites where you can? I, I'm not sure in the home service space if you can delete on some sites, but feel free to let them know about any of that if possible. Oh, well, that's a good question. I don't know if there's, I, yeah, I don't know about if you can delete a review. So the, the three strategies I would say is, is look at that review and, and analyze it honestly and respond in a way for your future users. Um, two, uh, because out of that, if it's fake, I've had uh, fake reviews on Yelp or in other sites um, where the cool thing about Yelp is that I flagged them um, I've been successful on a couple of them to, to have them removed because they, they're, they weren't a customer. And I was able to demonstrate that I had one, another one that I got a poor review. It wasn't a customer. You can tell they took, they took review, uh, paragraphs from bad reviews from, I saw that one. yeah. And then like I flagged it, it was removed. They did it again and I flagged it and it wasn't removed. And I was like, ah, oh, bummer. Yelp um, isn't gonna remove that. But what I what we have done is then the best strategy is that you you wow your clients so much that they love and they're raving fans of yours that they just post good reviews and they bury the bad ones. Um, and you know, and then hopefully you're doing that across the different platforms, right? 
because I've done yeah. that also on other platforms where I flag them and no one really looks at them. So then I write a response and again for the future user. Yeah. Perfect. Fantastic. Um, so another question we've had come in here. Um, are there things that are more important that you'd recommend focusing on, like for a new user who's building out their uh, their leap list, or I'm sorry, their Yelp listing? Um, is there anything you'd recommend focusing on? Any key areas or like uh, tips that you recommend for a new Yelp user? Yeah. So when you plan your business page, the most important thing you're going to want to do is complete your profile and add photos. So completing your profile is filling out your about the business section, your history section, and your owner section. Each of those have character count maximums. Do your best to use those sections and describe the services you offer, the specialties that you're working in. And in your guys' industries as well, under whatever three categories you indicate you're in, there's a plethora of services that fall under those categories and you can indicate what you do and don't offer. By having those keywords and descriptions completed and indicating what those services are, that will help you appear in relevant searches. With images, you wanna have a minimum of 10. That's gonna help increase your visibility on the site by 30%. And in your guys' industry, have pictures of your staff, what your vehicles look like, what the team is going to show up looking like when they come to the home. A lot of those images are going to help break down the consumer's trepidation about making an appointment. But then those photo captions also help you show up in search results. So mm -hmm. getting really specific about the services you're offering. One example would be like, if you're a window installation business and you don't do repairs at all, being really specific and going heavy on what you do do instead of outlining all the things you don't do. So indicate in the services section what you offer and be very explanatory in your about the business about those things, but don't go into great detail about what you don't offer. You'll kind of give yourself a counter value there, if that makes sense with those keywords. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think what you said there about adding like photos of your team and your trucks and all of that good stuff, I think that does go a long way to helping to kind of set those customer expectations and kind of can help set you apart from maybe some uh, other other options in the area. So that's a great tip. Thanks for that. Absolutely. Um, like okay, so I yeah, yeah. About that. The cool thing about the free tools. So if you're a new business like all of a sudden you can enter the marketplace with these free tools and become very relevant quick especially on yelp um it you know mostly and and get and people that use the platform that way the reviews get um recommended right so again find out who um emily you all have um yelp community managers right um yeah so one strategy once i learned this i was like oh cool they throw basically parties uh you know for lack of a better term find out who the yelp community manager is and and get involved um because you'll be around other business owners as well that that's uh if you can find a way to to, to leverage that yeah absolutely perfect that's a great recommendation yeah fantastic all right, um, I know we're getting close to the top of the hour here. I think we have time for maybe just one more quick question. Um, so final question for today is, can, can you give a recommendation on how frequently I should update my Yelp page? Um, is there any anything that's you know preferred in terms of, should I do it every day, every week, every quarter, something along those lines? Yeah, absolutely. So when you set up your page originally, whether you're a new business or you're just new to engaging with Yelp, complete that profile, add those images, and it really should be good to go and maintain unless any significant information in your business changes. If you're offering something different or something of that nature, I always tell people to download the free Yelp for Business Owners app because then you can get notifications about reviews right to your phone can also sign up for email notifications, but Yelp pretty much is a setup and let it operate. 
Now I will say seasonally, it's a great idea to log in and maybe upload more photos or information about services that are relevant at that time of year. And I'll also just mention when it comes to integrating into a social media platform, if for example, you're gonna be on Instagram or Facebook, you maybe wanna do one to three posts a week on a platform like that. And that could be something as simple as an image or a video of someone doing a very random normal task that they do every day as a part of your business, but that your consumers maybe don't know anything about. I know Carlos's team, they'll do a lot of education sometimes about solar and how solar works just to get people interested who are connected to them online. And have your the Yelp users upload pictures too. That's right. Have okay. the people yep. who are getting the work done add photos of, of their jobs for sure. Fantastic. All right. Well, I think that's about all the time we have for today. Um, Emily, Carlos, do either of you have any closing words or parting advice for our audience here today? I would just say hang in there, take it one step at a time. And if you have someone on your staff who's maybe younger and more apt at the internet, feel free to hand these types of tasks over and check on them, you know, in a few days and see what they were able to get accomplished for you. Fantastic. I think I, yeah, I, I would just encourage people to, to um, use it, use this sort of all these review platforms as uh, feedback to help make your business better. Perfect. Thank you both so much for your time and your insights here today. Uh, very helpful, very insightful information. So thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, I do have up on the screen here, if you think of any additional questions or anything afterwards, I know Emily shared her email address and Emily, if you're okay with that, um, when I send out the recording, um, I can maybe include that in, yeah. in that package as well. So the audience Absolutely. can uh, either send in questions directly to Emily or uh, this marketing at leap digital.com email address that goes directly to, to me. Um, so feel free to send in any additional comments, questions, concerns, things you might have after this session today. Um, and as we close out today, you'll see a short survey pop up. So we'd love to get your feedback on today's webinar. And if there's any topics you might be interested in for future sessions, we'd love to get your feedback on that as well. So thanks again, Emily and Carlos, and thank you everyone for joining us on the call today. Um, appreciate having everyone, and I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Have a great day. Mm -hmm. You too. Bye-bye.